Tim Key for MIBtownline.com. Hey, be sure to like this video, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. I guess you're supposed to do it right away. Boom, click on the likes. And that's going to help us get more viewers so people can see the great content that we produce here, keeping officials educated even in the times of unknown. We've got the Pell Report coming up, but yesterday, on August 8th, I had a chance to do a presentation for the IACO Clinic, the Inner Association Council of Athletic Officials. They're a Chicago area organization. And what they do is they've been around for 40 plus some odd years, almost 50 years, educating officials. And they do a clinic every year. They did their clinic via Zoom, like everybody else is doing them nowadays. And I had a chance to do a presentation, high school football on the clock. So here's the videos that were in that presentation. And this is me discussing the videos and how to manage the clock in game situations. So our next play is we're going to look, once again, we're going to start out we always want to look at the down and distance, okay? So up here, we see that it's, it's third down. You can see up here, right here, third down. So third down, and from there, we know that our line of gain is a big line. It's the 35-yard line. If the line of gain is here, I'm telling myself as a head linesman up here, I am telling myself the big line, 35, 35, 35, before the ball is even snapped, okay? Because I need to know that I'm going to kill that Regardless, you know, when, or if I get over that line, if I get over that 35-yard line, I got a first down, and I want to look over my shoulder. I want, to, I want to tell everybody that I know what's going on. So here we go. So we're going to run this play, and I want you to go back up to the headlinesman, and I want you right here, I want you to focus in on the headlinesman on this play and see what happens. So we'll let this run out now. I'll, go, uh, I'll give you the wide version of it. All right, so here we go. You can see it's a run or a swing pass. Now the, the player's the player's forward progress looks to be stopped, and you can see the player is still clearly there's a lot of green. So to say that he's out of bounds is is not pretty accurate. So you can see now he goes out, and now our headlinesman kills the clock. Okay, so fine. I'm not exactly sure why he's killing the clock. But we're going to fast forward ahead. You can see the referee comes over, and they have a they have a discussion about it, and they're talking about where they're at. Here's the thing, if you're, going to, if you're going to give forward progress, then give forward progress, and that ball is, is in bounds, and we need to roll the clock, because that is not out of bounds. If, you, if it's near the end of the game, and you're trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, because they're trying to get out of bounds to stop the clock, then give them on the out of bounds spot. Don't give them both, because that's not, that's not in the spirit of the rule. You know, you go back to, oops, again, here we go, you go back to this one, uh, you'll see that, I mean, this is an additional, additional like three yards from where he went out of bounds. So, I mean, we want to go, all right, come on, play. All right, so we want, you know, right here is where the forward progress is. So we should be rolling the clock. If we're going to call forward progress, then we're rolling the clock, and then we're not killing it. If we want to give him the out of bounds, then we need to mark the ball over here. And I'm not, you know, that, that's kind of a personal philosophy you know, I'm not, I mean, the, the actual spirit of the, you know, the actual rule is that forward progress is stopped. Regardless of the time of the game, you're probably going to roll this clock because you'd be putting the defense at a disadvantage. They kept them in bounds. But my point being is that you're not going to give them both. You're not going to kill the clock, and you're not going to then give them that spot. That, wouldn't, that would not be uh, the right thing to do, in my mind. So that's something to be aware of. All right, so we're going to go to our next play now. Let me get this, uh, let me get this up here for you. We'll go wide on it. Here's the play. All right, once again, we're always looking at, our, at what, what's going on. We see it's first down over here. So we can go up to the top. We see it's first down. And we know that our line to gain, it looks like we're, we're on like the 29. So our line to gain is the 19. So we, we're telling ourselves that before the play. And even if you're the line judge down here and you get the lucky of seeing the, the, the sticks across the field like that, you still want to be reminding yourself because what if the ball goes out of bounds your way? So keep telling yourself but before every play, what's the line to gain? So that way I know if I have to stop the clock. So we'll let this play run out. Like I said, we know where we're going now. We know all, we know all our particulars. So you see it's a quarterback draw right up the middle. And he's over the line to gain. And now what's happening? So our headlinesman is just going to mark the spot. In this game, we actually have a side judge here, too. So, I mean, we have that. We've got an umpire 
who is right. Oops, let me uh, get the draw back up. We've got the umpire who's right there. Okay, so we've got two other officials who know. Maybe our headlinesman right here is doesn't you know? It's, it's concentrating on you know the what's the action. So he's not 100% sure, but we know that our umpire can see the line of game. He can see that stick. So somebody should be killing this clock because remember that. Like I said, nine times out of ten, that might not matter. But if it's late in the game, that's going to matter. And it also, like on a film clip like that, it stands out. I can see it. I know that that official is not killing the clock and is not aware of his surroundings, not aware of that line to gain. So it's important to tell yourself what the line to gain is. What is the line to gain on every play? So that way you're ready to go, and if it does come to that spot where now you're you're, you're close, and you'll know. You'll look good. You don't have to look over your shoulder. You'll look good. You'll look, you'll look like you're focused, like you're, right, you're ready to go on the game. All right, so we're going to go to our, our next play now, which this one, we're going to, once again, we, we look at it. If, uh, let's get to it. Wow, I'm all crazy on me. All right, so you can't really, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out right here, it, it is, it's not fourth down. It's uh, second down. There's the line to gain, okay? So we've got the 20-yard line is where we're, we're putting the ball in. The line of gain is about the 15. All right, so we now know that that's where we're going. So the ball. So if it's if it's 15, we know that if we get beyond the 15, the clock is going to stop. And I'll and I'll show you why in a second. So here is the running play to the right. Now remember. Now we told ourselves. Remember we told ourselves what's the what's the line to gain. You know we we kept we kept saying that it's the line to gain is the 15. So we know the line of gain is the 15. We're going to continue now. We're going to continue with the play. You're going to see the ball. Now, now we're past the 15 right now. So we're past the 15. We know that if, here, because here's the 15. The 15 is right there. We now know that this clock is going to stop. It has to stop, no matter what. Because what ends up happening is there ends up being a fumble. Now the ball is fumbled. So it turns out that team A ends up recovering the fumble. But it doesn't matter because the clock would stop regardless, whether team A or team B, because why? We passed the line to gain. It's officials timeout. We're going to stop the clock. So, you know, going back wide on it, you'll see that our officials, so like we got our, we got our line judge who's a covering official right here. This is one of those where I said even as a line judge, you want to remember what the line to gain is because now you're not looking across the field. You don't have that luxury of doing that. You have to just make the decision based off of the spot. And see, now he's looking, he's looking down, and once again, you got an official here, you got a back judge here. Whoa, how did that happen? You got a back judge here. Nobody's killing the clock. And so what does that, what does that say? It just says it's, it's lack of concentration sometimes. We, we lose our focus on the field because that is a first down. Whether it went, and, whether, and if the ball went out of bounds, it doesn't matter. Then it's out of bounds. So that's another reason to kill the clock. So even if you had it in, it doesn't matter. It's a first down. Even if Team E gets the ball, it's, a first, or it's going to be a first down for them. We kill the clock. Like I said, this just shows up on film. It, it, it does separate the good and the bad or the good and the ugly or whatever you want to say because you can see clear as day what's going on here. So, ju so just when you go out and work games, whenever they may be, I might go to, you know, who knows? We might, some people might end up traveling to Iowa to work here in the, in the fall. But whether it's the spring or whenever, when you get back out on the field, those are the, these are the things that, that tend to show themselves on film, and you don't want you know, to you find yourself losing that concentration, showing like it looks lackadaisical, it looks like you, you don't know what's going on. And once again, in those critical times where we're in the under, under five minutes, under two minutes, not killing the clock, you can lose precious seconds if you don't have a clock operator who's right on it. Sometimes clock operators will save your tail. But if you don't, now you've got one team screaming at you because, you know, we didn't, we didn't get the clock or, or, or whatever it might be. All right, so we're going to go wide on this one. Once again, we're always going to set it up. What's the, what's the down and distance? It's second down and about, looks like about three. So we see it's second down and about three. We know that now. So that's going to help us in determining what's going to happen. So... The quarterback now takes the ball, or he's going to take the snap, but what's going to happen is he's going to drop back, and all of a sudden, whoop, 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 fumble, fumble Ruski, fumble Maya. Ball's on the ground. What's going on? 
All right, so now we got a bunch of things going on here. Now this is where a little bit of philosophy comes in comes into play. Oops, sorry about that. Keep wanting to go back to the main stage. Um, here's where the a little bit of philosophy comes into play because right now the clock there's no reason for the clock to stop right now because this is a running play. Now if it's a change of possession and team B is going to get a, uh, a new series, that would be a reason to stop the clock. This is more important late in the game. I mean, you do want to do this now, but, or any time in the game, I should say, but it's also very important late in the game because look what ends up happening. We're gonna, I'm just going to let it run out here and show you, and you can just kind of do your internal clock. Dig, dig, dig. No one's stopping the clock. No one's stopping the clock. No one's stopping the clock. Nobody's stopping the clock. Who's got the ball? I don't know. I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How many seconds are going by? Has the clock operator stopped the clock? Has a back judge stopped the clock? I don't know. He's not, in the, he's not in the film. But now it's decided that team A is going to retain possession and all is good. But really, was, was all good? You know, you have to, we'll go back to the play. I'm going to go, I'm going to run this one back because you got to give it, if you know 100%, so you come in, we're wide on the play. You come in on this play right now, and you know, okay, here's the ball, boom, boom, boom. And now you're this official down here, or you're the referee coming in, and you know Team A has possession. You know that 100%. Then you go up. You go up with the next down, and you go and clear it, and you get them out there, and then you don't have to stop the clock. But right now, nobody knows who has the ball. So we're still, we still don't know if Team A, now about these guys are digging. So you've got the umpire digging, you've got the referee digging, you've got the headline or the line judge digging. They're not thinking about the clock. Who do you think should be thinking about the clock? I personally think now that our headlinesmen should be thinking about the clock, or maybe our back judge should be thinking about the clock. Somebody needs to kill this clock because we're taking way too much time here. Time's ticking away, and this is not right. This now becomes an official's timeout. That's all this is. This is an official's timeout now for us to figure out what's going on. And after we figure out what's going on, then what we can do is we can roll the clock on the ready if Team A ends up with the ball again. Or if not, we're going to award first down to Team B, and they're going to get the ball, and then that's that. And then we're not going to start till the snap, as we talked about uh, earlier. So a couple more clips to go here, and then uh, we're going to cut you guys loose. I'll take some questions. Uh, like like uh, Jim said, running 100 miles a minute here. All right, so uh, let's go to this clip. We'll go, uh, we'll go wide on it. And once again, now we're going to look at down and distance. So we're going this direction, okay? That's the direction that we're headed. And now we're going to look at the down. It's fourth down and about two. So does it matter if it's fourth down and about two? No, because what's going to happen at the end of this game? At the end of this play, the clock will stop. It will stop. doesn't matter. Either Team B is going to get the ball or Team A is going to get a first down. Clock will stop at the end of this play. So go back wide on it, and we'll see what happens. And this is late in the game, by the way. So this is, there is, there is like, team, team A is down, and Team B is up by three, and there's two minutes left, or less than two minutes in the game. So this is important now. This is that crunch time. And this fourth down is a big play in the game because if they get it, the game's over. Or if they get it, they, or they can still have a chance to win. If the t defensive team doesn't, then they, uh, or if they stop them, they, they win the game. So if you see, it's a tight, it's a tight spot potentially. And you look at our headlinesman. He's locked in up there. And now here's the play, and you can see it's short. Now our headlinesman up here has got some stuff going on. He's really concentrating on this spot. But what should he be doing? Yeah, he's got action behind him. I don't think he has to come in as hard as he needs to because guess what? We're way short of the line of gain. So I don't know from a mechanic standpoint if he needs to do that. But somebody needs to be killing the clock. This clock needs to stop right now. Now our referee comes in and stops it. So thank goodness our referee's on it. But if you're this official, you need to know that we're stopping this clock. And coming in this hard and, and leaving this action, not necessarily recommended. But the point being is that every official on fourth down needs to know that the clock stops. Every official. It doesn't matter if you're the covering official or not. The clock stops on fourth down, period. That's why we do this. We remind ourselves what's going on. All right, so I'm going to pull up the last play here. 
and then hopefully we can all get outside. I'm in my uh, the studio right now. Hopefully we can all get outside and enjoy what's left of this beautiful Saturday. Um, and even though a lot of announcements today have not been good for our, us football fans, but nonetheless, we've had a good clinic and uh, it's been fun. So hopefully you, you've enjoyed it. All right, so now let's go back to, we're going to go wide on this, on this clip. This clip is kind of like, it's kind of your final examination, as they say. So I want you to, if you got a little notepad or something, or just mentally, I want you to count in your head, or mark down little tick marks, how many clock stoppers are potentially in this uh, play. So let's r run it out. Now look, it's first and 10. Big lines here. You got a 10, you got a 20. That's going to make it nice and easy for us. Nice and easy, first and 10. All right, so let's go. So let's, how many... How many clock stoppers do we have on this, on this play? All right, so we've got a run, then we've got a fumble, and then we've got a ball in the air, and then we've got all this stuff going on at the goal line. And now we do have, a, we do have our, our covering officials stop the clock. But going back to kind of our, so, so I'm going to run it one more time, and I, I guess I didn't go wide on it. I'll go wide on it for you so you don't have to see my ugly bug anymore. Um, you can see it on a full screen. Count how many clock stoppers you've got. So there's one, maybe. And there it goes, the videos, there's, there's another one, maybe, maybe. How many do we got? All right. So now let's walk through this play and see. See how you did. Let's see how you did on, on, on your final. Everybody grades their own, pay, their, their own uh, test. I'm not going to grade it for you. So once again, first and 10, we got the big line. We, we tell ourselves that. All right. So first play, first thing here. We got the fumble, all right? So we can see the fumble here. We've got the fumble. But what's our line of gain? All right, so our line of gain, remember, the line of gain is a 10, all right? So now the ball is fumbled, and it's not, I mean, we can, we're not going to argue whether the kid threw it forward or not. We're calling it a fumble. It's just a fumble. So now the ball is beyond the line of gain. So right now, we've got one clock stopper for sure. We are beyond the line of gain because if this guy recovers it, it's a first down. If this guy recovers it, it is now a, uh, a change of possession. Team B is going to be awarded a series. So clock is going to stop. Everybody's saying clock is stopping at the end of this play. All right, now we've got another potential. We've either got, we've got a goal line here. So now we've got, if Team A ends up with the ball, what do we have? We've got a touchdown. What does that do? That stops the clock, right, because that's a score. If Team B ends up with the ball. We've got a touch back. So team B is going to get the ball, awarded a new series at the 20. So we've got a clock stopper. So there you go. That was your answer. If you were able to pick up those four clock stoppers, you are a winner. You got an A on this final examination. I thank IACO for the opportunity to speak to them. Don't forget, subscribe, like, do all that fun stuff. Join us every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central, on mybtonline.com. We're going to be here talking football. We've got basketball meetings coming up in October. We're going to be doing those weekly, too. Who knows? We've got baseball, softball, volleyball, you name it. They're all coming your way as well. $59, the premium subscription gets you insurance, a $1 million of liability, $10,000 supplemental medical, or you can just go with the basic 39 get you access to all of our training materials. So don't miss out on becoming a great official. $39 a year, you get everything. It's not a la carte. But we do have that available. If you don't want to pay that, go to our on-demand page, which is coming soon. Hopefully, it might be this week, actually. And you'll just go, you know, for 99 cents, you can watch one of our meetings or whatever. If you can go that route as well. So, for MyBTownLine.com, I'm Tim Kiefer. We'll catch you next time.